Welcome, brothers and sisters. So here's something fun. <laughs> the symbolic meaning of the virgin birth. Oh my goodness. Let's get into it and let's let Sir Joseph Campbell help us out along the way. Because this is an interesting topic. The symbolic meaning of the virgin birth. So God and sex? Okay, let's dive into it. It is the mystery of the generation of life. The act of generating a child is a cosmic act and is to be understood as holy. And so the symbol that most immediately represents the mystery of the pouring of the energy of life into the field of time is the lingam and the yoni, the male and female powers in creative conjunction. The virgin birth comes into Christianity by way of Greek tradition. When you read the four gospels, for example, the only one in which the virgin birth appears is the gospel according to Luke, and Luke was a Greek. In India, there is a system of seven psychological centers up the spine. They represent psychological planes of concern and consciousness and action. The first is at the rectum, representing alimentation, the basic life-sustaining function. The serpent well represents this compulsion as a kind of traveling esophagus, going along, just eating, eating, eating. None of us would be here if we weren't forever eating. And what you eat is always something that just a moment before was alive. Now, the second psychological center is symbolized in the Indian order of spiritual development by the sex organs, which is to say the urge to procreation. A third center is at the level of the navel, and here is the center of the will to power, mastery, and achievement, or in its negative aspect, to the conquering, mastering, smashing, and trashing of others. This is the third or aggressive function. And as we are given to recognize in the symbolism of the Indian psychological system, the first function, alimentation, is of an animal instinct. The second, procreation, is of an animal instinct. And the third, mastery and conquest, is also of an animal instinct. And these three centers are located symbolically in the pelvic basin. The next or fourth center is at the level of the heart. And this is of the opening to compassion. Here, you move out of the field of animal action into a field that is properly human and spiritual. The virgin birth, that is to say, it is the birth of spiritual man out of the animal man. It happens when you awaken at the level of the heart to compassion, calm passion shared suffering, experienced participation in the suffering of another person. That's the beginning of humanity. Why virgin birth? The begetter is of the spirit. This is a spiritual birth. The virgin conceived of the word through the ear. And who is born? It's you. 
all of these symbols and mythology refer to you. You can get stuck out there and think it's all out there. So you're thinking about Jesus with all the sentiments relevant to how he suffered out there. But that suffering is what ought to be going on in you. Have you been spiritually reborn? Have you died to your animal nature and come to life as a human incarnation of compassion? What is symbolically referred to is not Jesus's physical birth, but his spiritual significance. That's what the virgin birth represents. Heroes and demigods are born that way as beings motivated by compassion and not mastery, sexuality, or self-preservation. This is the sense of the second birth when you begin to live out of the heart center. The lower three centers are not to be refuted, but transcended when they become subject to and servant to the heart. You know the idea of the ascent of the spirit through the different centers or archetypal stages of experience. One begins with the elementary animal experiences of hunger and greed, and then of sexual zeal, and on to physical mastery of one kind or another. These are all empowering stages of experience. But then, when the center of the heart is touched, and a sense of compassion awakened with another person or creature, and you realize that you and that other are in some sense creatures of the one life in being, a whole new stage of life in the spirit opens out. So let's speak for a moment about divine marriage. The only real relationship is the union of soul with source, the father and the son becoming one. But we do have other ways of framing this awakening process where there is this divine marriage taking place within the vigil through the process of, you could call it balancing chakras, you could call it learning your life lessons, purifying your karma. There's a lot of ways to look at it. There's this marriage of masculine and feminine is really what we whittle it down to. With the chakras, it can be the higher and lower, masculine and feminine, inner and outer. Just in general, masculine we can think of as pure awareness coming into the feminine realm of conscious experience, the field. This masculine inpouring of life force and the feminine womb or field of expression. And it is this marriage of the physical and the spiritual that produces the birth of the fourth density consciousness. Remember that, you know, words are symbols. They're twice removed from reality. Words are symbols of symbols. So even when we use the feminine and masculine symbolism, in different schools of thought, we actually find them totally flipped on their head and contradictory, but that that doesn't matter. That's what's so wonderful is that these are just frameworks for leading out of the choppy intellect into the fluid knowing through energy. But these are beautiful ways of framing it. Um, so I want to cover a couple of them here and show you how they can alternate. 
So one way of looking at it, this is what we talked about in the video yesterday about Christ consciousness. One way of looking at it is that the lower three chakras are considered masculine and the upper three are considered feminine. So the lower three would be about the physical world and the upper three would be about the spiritual realm. And you can see how this makes sense because the upper three chakras, uh, if feminine is spiritual, um, then yes, we're looking at the throat, the third eye and the crown. And these are about freely expressing truth, um, truth, which is love, love and kindness and patience and comfort and peace and joy freely expressed truth. Third eye being intuition and discernment and crown being connection with the source. We can see how these have a feminine quality and uh, certainly point to the spiritual realm with the lower three chakras being the root sacral and solar plexus having to do with physical health and safety, security, stability, the sacral chakra having to do with that procreation drive, sexuality, sensuality, exploring the physical world and the senses, the emotions as well. And the solar plexus, navigating the ego, learning through act, acting on our will, learning through acting on our joy, our personal power, on our, our goals and following our desires and refining, becoming a, a refinement of ourself in that process, shedding what doesn't need to be there, but coming into our power, um, you know, through these physical masculine experiences. So that is a very helpful way to, to look at it. <clears throat> and I find that masculine is uh, usually equated with the spiritual self-aspect or the animating principle. Uh, that's how it is in the course where, uh, you know, God is a he, Holy Spirit is a he, um, using that sim symbol of it being the spirit, the animating principle that joins with the feminine physical or conscious experience. Um, so masculine is typically equated with the spiritual self aspect, the animating principle, while feminine is usually associated with physical earth or the creative womb that holds conscious experience. <laughs> but then alternately, masculine is yang or outward physical form, while feminine is yin or recessive, invisible implying spiritual. So you see how it works both ways. And so it's the only real point being made here is there's no need to get rigid about seeing it any particular way. The opening of the heart to the world is what is symbolized mythologically as the virgin birth. And now we're returning to you. Sir Joseph Campbell's words. This opening of the heart to the world is what is symbolized mythologically as the virgin birth. It signifies the birth of a spiritual life in what was formerly an elementary human animal living from merely physical aims of health, progeny, power, and a little fun. <laughs> But now we come to something else. For to experience this sense of compassion, accord, or even identify with another or with some ego transcending principle that has become lodged in your mind as a good to be revered and served is the beginning once and for all of the properly religious way of life and experience. And this may then lead to a life-consuming quest for a full experience of that one being of beings of which all temporal forms are reflections. Mm. 
now this ultimate ground of all being can be experienced in two senses, one as with form and the other as without and beyond form. When you experience your God as with form, there is your envisioning mind and there is the God. There is a subject and there is an object. But the ultimate mystical goal is to be united with one's God. And with that, duality is transcended and forms disappear. There is no body there, no God, no you. Your mind going past all concepts has dissolved in identification with the ground of your own being because that to which the metaphorical image of your God refers is the ultimate mystery of your own being, which is the mystery of the being of the world as well. And so this is it. Jesus was a historical person who realized in himself that he and what he called the Father were one. And he lived out of that knowledge of the Christhood of his nature. A moment of gratitude for Joseph Campbell for all that he shared in his, in his books. These quotes were from his book entitled The Power of Myth. And his last quote is this. The images of myth are reflections of the spiritual potentialities of every one of us. Just beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, peace be with you. Love you.